It's a glass uh, face, amorphous, as we call it. On this side, you have high aesthetics, low strength. And the more crystalline grains you get, the more glass ceramics you get, like the lithium desilicate, for example, the Emax CAD. Uh, and then you get a higher strength, but not so good aesthetics as the ones on the left side. And to the right side, we have the zirconia polycrystal ceramics. You have crystalline grains and no glass face at all. And you, have, you get high strength, but low aesthetics there. So what are the characteristics of uh, uh, ceramics? Good to know. Uh, this one, uh, they are uh, very brittle. So if you drop it on the floor, you will get it in many different pieces. They have high compressive strength, but low tensile strength. We'll show you in the next slide what that means. Low fracture toughness compared to metals. So you can fracture them a little bit. They are a little bit easier to fracture than metals. Uh, high aesthetics, of course, biocompatible. Uh, they are inert. They won't uh, have any corrosion or chemical influence in the, in the oral environment. And they are metal free, of course. And that's um, something many of our patients really, really want to have. And this one is a plateau anterior, so you can sign. Uh, you have different materials, but this is one of the many, many, many uh, new uh, translucent materials here. And this is what I mean by compression and tension. So the uh, ceramics, they don't like the tension but the compression is, they, they, they handle it much better. So what's the, about the history? So as I said before, it's, it's not a new thing with ceramics, even if we think that is. So uh, before we used the porcelain infused metal, we used the uh, jacket crown, um, some spelling wrong here, but uh, we'll correct that. So Dr. Charles H. Land in 1903, he, he came up with a porcelain jacket crown. You know, that was an aesthetic uh, crown, but it uh, didn't work that well. It fractured and you can only use it for the front teeth and so on. So later on in the 50s, we got the porcelain fused metal. You know, not many people like the margin metal to, to, to get seen. So we uh, something came with a colorless uh, porcelain shoulder crown where you have uh, a porcelain shoulder buckley so you don't actually see the uh, metal margin and then in the 90s and 2000s you get the empress imax press lithium desilicate and then you got the development of resin cements that make our constructions much much more uh, much more uh, much higher strength and we can use them for posterior teeth, for example. And uh, later on in the 2000s, uh, Nobel Procero started milling alumina and zirconia. And in my mind, it's, it was the big revolution and it, le it led to uh, uh, the zirconia we have today. So this is a very small part of the history, but can we actually use ceramics uh, instead of metal ceramics. Uh, can we throw away all the metals and just use ceramics? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but we really have to know that the ceramics, they are the fracture very easy, they are brittle. So it's important to know that. They're not like metals. Metals are more, they can have a plastic deformation before the fracture, but the porcelains, they have almost no plastic deformation before they fracture. So they are very, very stiff. And if you compare that to the polymers here, you can almost bend the polymer how much as you want. They, it won't break, but the, the ceramic will break. The metal will, will last a little bit longer before it breaks. So that's important. And then we, just to mention it shortly about the E-model, it's important to know that uh, then again, that the ceramics are very, very brittle when you compare it to uh, metals and uh, uh, plastics or polymers. Uh, something you really have to know when you, when you read uh, uh, the, the, uh, the information you get from the companies, uh, they will tell you that the flexural strength for our material is so and so and so on. Um, 
So the fluctual, uh, fluctual strength is when you put a force on, uh, on, uh, on something and you just look at the force per unit area at the instant fracture. So when it fractures, you look at the force per unit area. So this uh, figure shows you the biaxial flexure test, which is, is the most used test I know. Um, but Cover Ray doesn't use that actually. So you have to be very careful when you look, when you compare different flexural strength, because if you, if the, the measurements are based on biax, uh, biaxial flexural strength, um, you can get a certain kind of uh, measurement and then Sorry. And uh, then you have to, um, and then um, if you if you like do like this figure here, you have the three point flexure test design. You will get another measure. So uh, measure. So Cantana they use the three point flexure test design. So if they get say flexural strength for five hundred megapascal for uh, a material. If they have used the by actual uh, strength, uh, flexural uh, strength design, they would have maybe got uh, um, a little bit more. So um, it, it's very hard to to uh, to uh, to know what they mean. But you really have to say to read what uh, uh, measurements have they done. So the three point flexural des test design is very uh, more reliable than other, can be more reliable than other tests if you, if you like. And then the fracture toughness is basically a, a, a material's uh, ability to stop a crack uh, when a crack uh, appears in the, in the material. And that's something you also read when you compare ceramics. Uh, hardness is something some people talk about and this is like the way that you can measure hardness. You put something uh, on the material and see what kind of uh, deformation you get. So if you see like this, if you go on this floor with high heels, you will get an impression on the floor and uh, it means that the high heels, they are a little bit harder or, uh, than the, the, the floor here. Uh, and zirconia, we actually had uh, a, a study or a, a thesis that call, was called ceramic steel in 1975. So you can see this is not a, a new material actually, and it's zirconia dioxide. And it's very important to know that when you talk about zirconium, it's a metal. Sorry. So zirconium is a, is a metal like titanium, but when you combine it with, with oxygen, you get zirconium dioxide and that's a ceramic material, not a metal. It's, it's very important to know. And zirconia is polycrystal, as you know, as we talked about, and uh, this figure will come back later on uh, when we talk translucency. Uh, polyformism, uh, polyform, polymorphism is uh, an important thing to know about zirconia. It comes in, in two different um, uh, phases. Uh, so when you heat it up, you can get the tetra tetragonal cube uh, phase, and you heat it up any mo uh, more, you get the cubic phase. But when, it, when the heat is gone and you cool it again, you will go back to the monoclinic phase, and that's not a good phase to use because uh, the uh, it, it, it doesn't work in the mouth. So we want that tetragonal face because that's the best thing that works in the mouth and, uh, and uh, the best strength and so on. So we add a little bit yttrium uh, oxide to the uh, zirconia here. It's about three mole percent. And then you get a partially stabilized zirconia. So in room temperature, this zirconia won't go back to monoclinic uh, phase, and then we get the right zirconia to use in our mouth. Um, and then uh, later on, many people, uh, many manufacturers have been using a more uh, higher mole percent of uh, yttria. And the, the higher percent of yttrium you, 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 you put in this material, 
the more uh, cubic face you will get. So you will get more translucency, but the, the strength will uh, be less. And uh, zirconia, as you know, it has a ability to stop a crack. If you get a crack, you will have a transformation from a tetragonal face to a monoclonic face. And uh, there are the monoclonic uh, face are a little bit bigger in the, in the crystals, and then it um, can stop the crack. And you have something that is called low temperature degradation, and that's when comes water and you chew on it, and so the zirconia, something happens with it, and it gets a transformation. Um, and uh, what it happens, if that has a clinical relevance, we don't know, but uh, they will, it will age with time, but we, we haven't seen any uh, drawbacks from that. But, uh, we really had a lot of early complications with zirconia. So a uh, lot of time we got uh, loss of retention. The porcelain shipping is very, very, was very uh, common. Uh, it was very hard to bond because it was inert. You cannot affect it with uh, acids and so on. And uh, then we had a drill compensation in the beginning. Uh, so we got a loose fit. Um, and we cemented with pig phosphate, which wasn't the optimal choice. And of course, the old zirconia, they, are, they were very white, so we had to uh, put some uh, porcelain on them to make them look good. But sometimes the porcelain went off, and this is an extreme case that we will come back to later. Uh, and the weak point here, as you can see, this is a lithium disilicate stained monolithic, uh, you have no uh, porcelain, you have uh, this flexural strength, but in the zirconia you have 900 or more uh, Benga Pascal flexural strength, but the, the ceramic here, the porcelain here is very weak. So we did as we did with the uh, metal ceramics. Um, in the beginning, we put uh, uh, porcelain on the whole construction, like this one, and this is a metal ceramic here, and this is a zirconia with a uh, porcelain uh, all the way on the uh, sorry, uh, on the bridge. But uh, later on, we discovered that we can actually just put some uh, porcelain here, broccoli, and we can have uh, zirconia here where the patient chooses, and maybe we got less frequent of uh, porcelain and sheep box. Just like we did the, uh, the upper here with the old uh, metal ceramics, we put the uh, metal uh, palatinally so a patient can chew on that. And this is what it looked. Uh, um, we had uh, zirconia here where the patient doesn't show uh, the construction and the outer side we had uh, porcelain for the aesthetics. But what if we can get a monolithic uh, construction? Just a construction that is no porcelain, just one uh, material throughout the, the whole construction. We will just get rid of the, uh, uh, the ship offs. And as you can see here, uh, the conventional uh, zirconia wasn't very translucent. So when we come to Cantana, we get a little bit more, more translucency. And if you get to the uh, lithium desilicate, the Emax CAD and press, you get a little bit more uh, translucency. So, but the flexural strength will follow the, the higher aesthetics and it will be lower with higher aesthetics. But uh, why don't we always just use um, Emacs uh, press, for example? You have to know that the flexural strength of Emacs uh, press or CAD is much lower than zirconia, as you see here, 470 megapascal. And basically, we have to preparate a little bit more to, to especially in the posterior area, to get uh, functional uh, uh, construction. And uh, this is a good way to, to see it here. As you can see, um, that translucency, if you compare with Emacs Press, you have to be very, uh, uh, to look uh, here, it, it says LT. This is a, the low translucent Emacs Press. You have the high translucent Emacs press, but this is the low uh, translucent Emacs press. And uh, the translucency with Zirconia, for example, uh, ultra translucent, is comparable to the Emacs low translucency, but 
you have a higher flexural strength and it's a three point venting test, uh, not uh, the biaxial uh, uh, test that uh, Evofly uses. And this is just a range of uh, flexural strength comparison between different materials. Uh, the ESO 6, uh, 6875 says that if you want to have uh, uh, ceramic bridges in the posterior area, they have at least to have 800 megapascal of flexural strength. But we want them monolithic uh, construction. We want them, but now we have actually also the multi-layer construction where we can actually get the, this natural look and appearance of a tooth. You have dentin, you have enamel, and you have all the different layers that it makes it looks good. So this is actually a photo I got of a friend of mine, uh, Abbe, thank you very much. Uh, this is a multi-layer uh, bridge, and I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but you see that they're, they're, it looks more alive than the old uh, zirconia. And uh, here we have uh, a case with, uh, for example, two Emax CAD, uh, two single crowns, this one and this one. And on the other side, we have Cantana STML. Uh, we, used, we did this case for a year ago, maybe uh, one half a year, one and a half year. And uh, please, I will uh, not advise you to make a cantilever here. This uh, patient uh, don't have, uh, this is not in function, this cantilever, but it's uh, not recommended to make cantilever with, this, with the SDML. But in this case, we did it because we, she had no, no function on that. And it's been functioning for yeah, almost two years now, so we'll see. So these are the, the dental series, the technicians that has done in the lab. Um, is it a problem when we use zirconia? Because many people will tell you, oh, you can't do it on Bruxers and you can't do it on people who have a lot of wear on their own teeth. No, it's not a problem as long as it's polished. And actually, uh, polished zirconia uh, is not uh, very abrasive uh, if you compare it to cobalt chrome and porcelain uh, and so on. Uh, can we use it in the clinic? Do we have evidence? Yes, we, all, we have. We have uh, this study here, an RCT study from 2018 by Saylor and uh, their team. And they uh, say that the FGPs uh, um, FDPs from zirconia uh, ceramic and metal ceramic posterior FDPs resulted in similar outcomes for the majority of outcome measures. So we are beginning to, to, to maybe handle zirconia right now, but we still have a lot of drawbacks. Um, another study here from uh, 2018 about uh, zirconia ceramic uh, implant supported single crowns. They are a valid treatment alternative to metal ceramic crowns with similar evidence of biological complications and less aesthetic problems. The amount of ceramic shipping was similar between the materials group, yet significantly, significantly more zirconia crowns failed due to material fractures. And I think that not, it hasn't to do with, with the zirconia, uh, with, uh, with the zirconia itself, but I think we have been uh, using it wrong, and we will check that later on. And uh, even this study shows us that uh, the success rate is almost the same for uh, single crowns on implant two supported uh, is, um, is the same for zirconia and uh, metal based constructions. But the most, most, most important thing when you do zirconia and especially when you do bridges, bridges you have to have the right dimensions of the connect connector. So in the front three, uh, three to three, uh, nine uh, square millimeter um, uh, connectors. In the back, posterior back, you have to have four, uh, four uh, at least, or other minimum measures that you use when you, when you do bra uh, bridges. And uh, this area here, the radius of this area is very good to know, so you, you, do, you cannot have sharp edges here because you will get a little, a, a small uh, radius here. So you will have a round and fine uh, 
margins here. And the greater the radius is, the better uh, strength does the uh, bridge have. So what is translucency? We have been uh, talking about Emacs CAD and uh, all that, but is it, is it actually important to, 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 uh, to have a translucent uh, material? And what is it? Is it it's of course uh, good uh, if you want to shower, you don't want to see everything. So uh, this is a good uh, translucent uh, door. You see a little bit, but not much, not more than necessary. Uh, when you do the, uh, to the glasses here, you almost see everything and more, it's more uh, transparency than translucency. So translucency is the relative amount of light transmitted through a material. Uh, and uh, the main thing when you measure translucency is that uh, the thicker the material is, the uh, less translucent is it. Just briefly to, to see that you, you, uh, when it comes to translucency, you get a light here, it gets reflected, scattered, and then it comes out. So um, if you get, as we said before, a more cubic face in the zirconia, you get a bigger, bigger grains, and then you have a, a little bit less of the scattering and reflection, and you have more light that will transmit through the zirconia, but lower strength. So here's a, a conclusion of uh, what zirconia uh, we have now. We have the first generation. Uh, they are uh, the ones with the greatest strength, but uh, least uh, aesthetics. Then we have the Petro uh, uh, translucent zirconia. And then we have the high translucent zirconia. You should just look at this for a while because if you talk about translucent zirconia and first generation zirconia, the flexural strength is almost the same. But when you get to the high translucent materials, you get a much lower flexural strength. And uh, people talk about ML, HD, low T, and this is the ML, uh, ML is a multi layer, HD, the high translucency, and uh, LT, the low, low translucent. Uh, an interesting material is also EPX uh, Zircad Prime. It's also uh, uh, zirconia. As you can see, they have 5Y uh, TCP here that is much more uh, uh, translucent. And they have the old zirconia here downside, but they have uh, with the 3Y, but they have different flexural strength. And that can be a good thing sometimes, but a drawback sometimes. And to get these constructions to look good, to work good, we really have to use adhesive cementation. Uh, so use uh, resin cements, and uh, according to studies, it will strengthening the, uh, the, the construction. Uh, what cement should I use? Panavia is the gold standard in all studies and the most used uh, and the most uh, searched uh, if you search for clinical um, or um, studies you will find that panavia is the reference uh, material for cements when they compare cements uh, adhesive cementation the more translucent the more we need to uh, adhesive cementation because it's a weaker construction do you have a micro, uh, macro retention, animal? Do you have a lot of moist, super gingival, sub -gingival? And uh, if you want to use dual or light cure, it depends on how thick the, the material is. And now we are going to the multi-layered constructions and we almost, when we use zirconia nowadays, it's almost, almost multi-layered. Uh, as you can see here, you have uh, the multi-layers, they have, um, uh, but the more aesthetic they are, the lower the strengths it is. And to get the best th strength from your uh, constructions, you really have to cement it with resin cement. And when it comes to zirconia, you have to ha use an MDP monomer containing resin cement, nothing else. And Panavia is the one that you, that is the original and it will bind to the zirconia, uh, the tooth, um, uh, and uh, even metals also. So MDP, MDP is very important. Uh, and you can see it's MDP from different manufacturers here, but after a time, they will see that um, the other manufacturers, they uh, don't have the same 
uh, strength of uh, sorry with uh, MDP if you compare it with the original MDP from Katana. So Katana has the original MDP and you have two other manufacturers but if you want to use the original one and the, the best tested one it's from uh, uh, Curvey of course. So how do we treat the uh, construction? We sandblast it for with aluminum uh, oxide perpendicular to the, to, to the construction, 10 millimeter distance, pressure one to two bar and to 10 to 15 seconds. Use the Cantana cleaner for both tooth and construction, you will get most of the contamination away. You can see here when uh, we compare it uh, with the Evo Clean and other, uh, other cleaners, you can see that the Cantana cleaner takes away a lot of contamination. Ceramic uh, Primer Plus, you can use it on the, on the zirconia or ceramics and it contains MDP. And then you have the tooth primer, MDP cell fetching primer accelerator. And Panavia is the golden uh, standard for, uh, for uh, cements. You use the ceramic primer on the construction, the tooth primer on the tooth, and you can use uh, the, and uh, you can cement very, very easily to, it's very easy to cement nowadays uh, with the resins. So it takes uh, uh, just a few minutes, then you're done. Then we are going to talk about Katana. And then uh, when we talk about the cases here, it's important to know that it's uh, to have this picture in front of you because you see there are different types of katana here. And the more aesthetic you get and the less force there is on, on the tooth or the construction, you can use a more uh, translucent uh, construction. But the more, the larger it is, the construction, the more, uh, a load it is on it, um, uh, then you have to go to the high translucent or high translu uh, multi layer or high translucent for zirconia. Um, so, uh, as we said, it's a multi layer, and there we have all the so the, the most translucent one is the weakest one, it's the ultra translucent, the super translucent is the second uh, uh, translucent, and then you have the multi-layer high translucent uh, zirconia that is not as um, uh, translucent as the others but there's still a translucent zirconia but with higher strength and this is uh, how it looks here and uh, this is just how much of the cubic face you have in different uh, zirconias i'm not going to go into that uh, very much here but uh, as you can see you, can, you have to follow these recommendations and uh, to, to get a, a good uh, a good construction. As you can see here, the more translucency, the weaker the material is, as we had before. And uh, for the preparation, uh, the most important thing is that when you use the high, very, very translucent materials, you have, you have to have one millimeter around the crown, around the, the tooth. But if you have the high translucent, not very, very translucent, the lower translucent ones, you can still have no, uh, 0 0.5 of zirconia, then maybe you have to have uh, uh, porcelain, but this is, we are talking just about the, the monolithic ones. And uh, avoid all the knife edges and so on, it's not a good thing to, to, to have. So uh, the, the ideal preparation is like that, very round, very nice, a good chamfer. Uh, so that will last if you do that. Please download the app from Katana. It's a very good one. You can use it to, uh, if you want a cementation guide, if you want to know anything about uh, science or anything about the materials. And of course you can go to FIAQ to get answer for your questions. And uh, when you polish the zirconia and you, when you grind the zirconia, please polish it very well. And these here, twist dia, is uh, something that I can't live without in my clinic because when I grind the zirconia and I polish with these ones, I will get a very, very smooth surface and uh, I will uh, get a better uh, prognosis for my construction and less wear on the animal. Now we go to the clinical cases here. Um, I hope you follow me. <laughs> uh, we have a male here, 40 years old. 
he has got an implant, a straw man bone level on one one. Uh, and uh, he has a titanium base uh, that we cemented a zirconia crown on it. And you know that titanium base, they are a little bit dark, so it can, you can see the dark shade if you have a much translucent uh, material. So you really have to look at this shade um, scale here from Katana. So if you, if you have a very bright and normal tooth, uh, then you can use uh, a construction with high translucency. The more dark or silver or uh, metallic you have a background uh, for, that, for the crown, you have to uh, use a one with low translucent. So, um, and uh, then, so in this case, we really had uh, one single crown, but we really used the HTML, the high translucent multi-layer uh, construction because we didn't want to have too much uh, translucency uh, because then we will see the dark shade from the, from the abutment. Uh, so we put some porcelain uh, on, uh, cut back porcelain, so we put the porcelain on the, on the buccal side. So that's how it looks and how, this is just when the patient got the crown. And uh, I haven't seen the patient, it was uh, delivered a month ago or something like that. So I will see him soon, but uh, I can say that this is a great, great uh, uh, construction that the patient gets. You can't see the, the, the dark uh, shade from the uh, abutment. Female here, 62 years old. Uh, we're gonna make the four front teeth here with single crowns and then implants in the, in the sides, in the upper jaw. These are the preparations. As you can see, the preparations, they are tooth alike. So you don't have any dark uh, shades or anything. They are very nice. Um, and then you can you look at this shade and you can see we are almost here. So we can use a high translucent uh, material and it's a single crown in the anterior region. Uh, so you can either use the UTML or the SDML because it's more translucent, more uh, aesthetically, um, uh, better aesthetics. So you can uh, uh, stick to those two. Um, so what we did actually was, uh, I will go back to this slide. We used the, used the SDML. We could have used the UTML here also, but we used the SDML with a lower translucency here just because the patient got um, uh, implant crowns in uh, metal ceramics. So we wanted to match them. So it, these teeth here doesn't look too, 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 <laughs> too natural. Uh, so basically the four uh, crowns here are a Katana STML um, cemented with Panavia. A very nice case actually uh, from Dental Seed. Here another one, a patient that needs two implants, uh, one three and two three. A straw man implants, bone level. Um, still, now we have also the, the, serum, uh, the metallic abutment. So we have to, to look at that and see, uh, can we mask this abutment? And as, we saw, as, we, as I said before, the thickness of the construction if it's very thick, it will make it less translucent. So in this case, actually, we had two uh, canines that were very, very thick. So we could use the SDML and still mask the, the, the abutment. The abutment looked like this approximately, but it was a very, very thick uh, construction. So we, can, we could actually use the SDML and put just a little bit of uh, porcelain here and there, and to make it look very good. And as you can see, it, it's very good aesthetics, uh, looks natural, uh, and actually we didn't use much of the uh, porcelain. It's much, uh, we have stained it and put a little, little bit of porcelain up here on the edges. Uh, this is how it looks uh, from uh, upper view. And it's uh, screw retained, nothing, almost nothing we do is cemented but 
some cases we have another case coming. And as you can see here, we actually built up uh, those, uh, his own teeth here because they are canines here and he doesn't have the laterals. Uh, but as you can see, the shape, the color is very great. So in this case, you have to call your techn technicians and talk with them and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this abutment. What about using, for example, STML or HTML? Uh, which one do you prefer? And then you, you can talk together. And uh, if you can use the STML with a little less uh, translucency than, than the most translucent one, but a higher strength, and then skip most of the porcelain, you will get a nice result. But talk with your dental uh, technician. It's very important. Just to show you here uh, uh, an old uh, metal ceramic uh, bridge that I redid. Uh, I've preparated uh, those teeth here and we did a canned liver um, here as you see and it's in uh, HTML so it's a high translucent multilayer not the weakest one but still a translucent one but it has a fluctual strength I think it was 1100 or 1200 megapascal or something like that and the connectors are very 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 important here it's very important to have connectors and as you can see I have cemented this with the resin cement so you have a little bit of the cement here that is taken now but uh, as you can see I always 90 95% of my construction I cement with resin uh, cement panavia uh, so you can see the difference here. This is the, the picture we talked about in the beginning. I showed you the, the beginning. So uh, we removed uh, these two here. Uh, she had an implant here that we couldn't use. We had to take it out. We couldn't replace a new one. So what I did was actually to make a bridge here with a cantilever, but this cantilever is not in function. A um, little bit of function, maybe, but not that much. But it's uh, HTML, uh, less translucent zirconia, but with a high flexural strength. Uh, as you can see here, it's a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, bridge here we have, and then we have a Cantana STML on this titanium base on a uh, Nobel implant, and because. Uh, it's a very thick crown. We could use the STML, uh, so we could disguise the the, the gray uh, uh, abutment. Um, this case, we are actually finished in the lower jaw. We are starting now in the upper jaw. But the patient had periodontitis in the three one uh, three one and four one, so we had to remove them, and uh, we had to do a, a bridge here between the canines involving the lateral incisors and then here in the back we did some implants uh, and I, I will actually just take a look at this picture we used we used in this case we used the stml uh, it's the not the highest uh, flexural strength but the, not the lowest but i think stml has the best uh, translucency when it comes to replacing uh, making bridges in the anterior area. Remember that in the anterior area with two pontics. So if you look at this uh, picture here, if you have a bridge or long span, you should be in this area here. And uh, if it's anterior bridge, you can actually use the SDML, but please, please, the connectors are very, very important here. Very, very important. And we have a, a uh, nice shade of the teeth. We don't have to. Dis the, we don't have a discoloration or anything like that. And then you can see the the difference here. And this is, in my opinion, this is a very very nice construction. You have uh, uh, ridge, bridge, pontic, pontic, uh, bridge, bridge, and it's cemented, of course, with, with the resin cement. And it's a very very nice bridge. And I would say that. I don't think we have made much uh, difference from uh, the, the patient's original uh, teeth. And actually, I didn't prepare much either. So we skipped the, we just had uh, porcelain here on the edges, not more. So we had a very strong and uh, good uh, 
uh, bulky, a bulk for this bridge. Um, this is a male who has uh, a lot of, uh, uh, what to say, um, wear on his front teeth. Uh, he's both a bruxer, but he also had a problem with reflux from his stomach. Now it's uh, taken care of, so he doesn't have it anymore. And he doesn't like the appearance of his teeth. And uh, we have tried to put composites and so on because he was so young. And now we, we can't do it with composites anymore. And as you can see on the back here, you have a classical erosion uh, uh, on the palatinal side of the incisors. And uh, actually we choose with this patient just to make the four incisors here because these were very good buccally and he didn't have a problem with this. Uh, so the preparations, you know, natural truth, no, no, nothing uh, strange. And I actually, when you, when you use a new zirconia, you can make thin, uh, thin, um, preparation, uh, thin, uh, thin crowns, constructions, and you don't really have to preparate that much. I don't know if you see it here, but if you compare it with a model, you uh, will see that I haven't preparated very, very much on the palatinal side, actually. And that's the, that's the good thing when we use monolithic, multi-layer, um, translucent uh, uh, constructions. So in this case, uh, we have uh, high aesthetics, of course, it's in the front, upper front, and uh, then we don't have that load uh, uh, as we have in the posterior area. So we choose to, do, to use the UTML ultra translucent multi-layer. Uh, we didn't use any uh, porcelain on these uh, teeth here, not covering anything with porcelain, just uh, uh, stained and uh, uh, monolithic all the way with a great flexural strength. And of course, you can see here, uh, they are very, not very thick, they are very um, thin. We don't have to preparate that much, so we work uh, minimal invasively. And this is the result one week after the cementation with resin cement. This is just one week after the cementation, one, two, 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 two. And actually the gingiva hasn't uh, been set uh, yet, but uh, the appearance of the crowns are very good. There are no uh, porcelain on these, uh, on these crowns and the patient is happy and really didn't have to preparate that much. Um, do, can we do bridges in the, in the posterior part? Yes, we can. And as you can see, but it depends on how many pontics you have and how big the pontic is. As you can see in this case, the pontic would be very little. So actually you can, you can use uh, uh, the SDML here. It's a three unit bridge. So you can still use it here with caution, but we have a very small pontic, a good uh, occlusion. So we use the SDML without any porcelain. And uh, here's the result. And it's cemented, of course, with resin cement. And you see that the connectors are very, very important that they are uh, according manufacturer's uh, recommendations. Then we have this case. We have a long span bridge. Maybe not the most optimal case to do a ceramic uh, bridge, but we did it anyway. Uh, so in this case, we go for this HD. We go for this HD. There's no other option. We, we put some ceramics. Uh, uh, on the buccal side and cut back and then uh, we, 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 we do that. And uh, then we get this uh, fine, very nice uh, result. And uh, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we just have uh, porcelain on the three front teeth here. These here are monolithic all the way. And this is done in HG, HT, uh, with a high flexural strength but still a little bit translucency. A great work from Dental Seed. Um, this case, maybe I sh sh shouldn't show it, but I will show it anyway. We have uh, two implant, uh, implants, one, two, 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 and we have uh, to cement this one, and we have a, a dark or uh, a metal uh, abutment, 
And of course, we are on this scale here, but I didn't talk to my technician. Uh, we didn't have any discussion. I just said, give me the SDML because it looks good in the front and we can do that. And the problem is that, it's, that it is too translucent. So we get actually a dark crown here. We can see the shade of the, of the, of the abutment here. So maybe I should have used the high translucent, the less translucent uh, construction with a little bit of, uh, we don't have to have porcelain here, but we can have it maybe here upper to make it look good, but it wouldn't have been that translucent. Or we could actually have used the, the, the twine paste from uh, Panavia and maybe probably use the more opaque uh, cement to just block the, the, the abutment. So that wasn't very good case, but Please, please, please take pictures and speak with your, uh, with your dental technician and uh, uh, use the try-in paste. It's a, it's a good thing to use. I, I didn't use that in that case. We come back to this last case here. We had this patient here that uh, had a removable partial denture in the lower jaw uh, and a zirconia bridge. Uh, I don't know the extension of that one, but I think it was one three to two three. Um, you can see here how she bites, and then eventually she, uh, she got uh, rid of the two um, uh, veneers of uh, porcelain, because this was a, an old zirconia with a, a great amount of porcelain. Not so good in this case when you have this uh, in the lower jaw. Uh, we choose to remake, redo the, the bridge from one three to two two. Uh, we actually had, um, uh, as you can see here, we have not so dark background, but a little bit, but it's, but it's gold. So if we get a thick one, a thick uh, construction, you can probably uh, not see the, 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 the gold, uh, uh, gold, um, yeah, the gold shade. So in this case, it was a high, high, high aesthetic, highly aesthetic case. The patient had uh, high aesthetic demands. We actually used the SDML with very, very bulky uh, connectors, uh, but with a little bit of porcelain on, on the, on the cut, cutback porcelain on the buccal side. And then again, please, 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 speak with your dentition, uh, dental technician about the case and what's the most, best thing to do here. So we did an uh, anterior crown with two, uh, with two uh, pontics and the connectors are very, very important. As you see here, we have uh, porcelain on the buccal side, uh, just on the incisal uh, uh, part. Uh, and this is how it looks now, great piece of work, uh, great, great, great uh, br uh, bridge, nice aesthetics. And she got an implant bridge in the lower jaw and that's very important also because if she has something good and uh, the occlusion is good and she has uh, acrylic in the lower jaw, maybe we can use a, a more aesthetic uh, bridge but with less uh, uh, flexural strength. And uh, just to remind you that uh, Panavia or Corare has a, a repair kit for porcelains if you have that problem. So it's very easy to use and very easy to, to mend. Um, and one thing I want to say before we, we, we stop now, uh, that uh, for you dental technicians who cement crowns on abutments, on, me on metal abutments or whatever it is you use, uh, please try to, to, to try to cement with Panavia. It's, uh, it's the original, you know, and it's, uh, all studies show that it's a good cement to rely on. So if you don't use it, please try to use it and see how it works. Because I guess a lot of uh, technicians deal with a problem and, and, and uh, dentists with a problem that uh, some of the um, um, 
zirconia constructions on implants, they loosen from the abutments. So please try to uh, pre-treat the crown uh, good and uh, cement it with panavia and see if you get other results. I'm sure you will get that. I'm very sure of that. Uh, and um, so is zirconia the future? Uh, yes, absolutely it is. It is the future. And I think in maybe five or 10 years, we really, really can go from the metal ceramics in 95% of the cases, even on implants. And now we are getting, we are using zirconia on um, uh, partial uh, uh, fixed uh, dentures on implants. And uh, Eventually, we start to use uh, uh, zirconia on uh, full arches also. And I think this is the future, but use it with, with caution and know your material. Talk with your technical, uh, technical uh, dental technician. So before I leave, I want to just tell you the checklist for success. Know your ceramics. Talk you to your dental technician. The preparation is important. Adhesive cementation. Almost all cases we do that, almost, almost. Uh, dimension of the construction, talk with the other uh, technical the technician again. More, we have more evidence for two supported uh, zirconia uh, ceramics uh, crown construction than for implant supported. But I'm very, very sure in five years we, we will use almost just zirconia for the, the implant constructions. Uh, always follow manufacturers' recommendations. Don't uh, make up uh, own recommendation. Don't do it. You can bond zirconia with the right technique and the right cement. We, when it comes to ceramics, we have no room for mistakes. You have to do it by the book. When it came to metal ceramics, we could actually do whatever we want. It still worked. But when it comes to ceramic, you have to do it by the book. So uh, this is uh, how it is. And the ceramics are the future, but we need to be educated and careful. And I hope when we meet, maybe in five years uh, now from now, I will show you all the beautiful cases we have done with katana, and even on implant supported uh, bridges also. So if you need, if you want to have the references, I have them here. Uh, I think Kuray uh, uh, will have uh, this uh, on their website. And uh, I will thank you very much. Uh, if you need to ask questions or come in contact with me, please, you can email me on this email. Uh, you're welcome to do that. And I thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wissam. Thank you. And uh, now the section is, uh, is was very, very interesting and a very, very nice cases to see. Uh, so the, 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 the question is up. So please, if there is any questions, uh, raise your hand or type it here on the, on the, on the chat. Yeah. It can also be that people are going to the beach. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Depending where they are in Sweden uh, or, or, or the world. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Uh, Okay, Wissam, can I uh, maybe ask you a question? Yes, yes. Um, when, you, when you are preparing the uh, cementation or, or the minimal invasion, the mistake you did with the, with the color, with the implant, it yes. was the, you didn't try, you didn't, you didn't use any try in paste. No, no. And I didn't know the, the I didn't uh, know the full, uh, you know, to take for, 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 for the katana. You didn't know the, the big difference between the STML and SJML and how to use it, you know, so uh, yeah. that's a big, uh, that was a big mistake. So if you, if we say, which, which is, which recommendation do you give us from the biggest mistake you've done so far in the clinical cases? Is there any really uh, uh, tough case or a bad case you really regret or you, 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 you did again, yeah, if you understand? Yeah, I know what you mean. 
actually, this is the, the implant case that I regret a lot. The patient is happy uh, that I showed uh, this, but, uh, but uh, you know, um, I did a case actually today. <laughs> okay. I uh, spoke with a dental technician to make an HD one, uh, an HD, Katana HD. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it was a posterior bridge with a lot of um, uh, two pontics. Uh, then I think they, they, they misunderstood it because a lot of technicians, they, they think as HD, it's the high translucent uh, material. So they use the STML or the UTML. But we really nowadays, from now on, I always tell my technicians that I want uh, STML, UTML, HTML, and I always write uh, the flexural strength uh, to them and say, uh, I want uh, 1,200 uh, megapascal because I think many dentists and many, um, uh, many um, technicians, they don't, we don't really know the difference between them. And we think that high translucent, it's the, the ones that are very good in aesthetics. But we have the high translucent with a little bit less aesthetics, but they are still uh, aesthetic. So uh, I think we should have a more discussion with a, with a technician. And uh, yeah, and I, I think we have learned a lot uh, through the years uh, with the old zirconia because we had a lot of, we had uh, some fractures of uh, the ceramic uh, framework. Uh, we, we, we haven't had that with Katana <laughs> the last two years we have using it. Uh, so uh, we, we wait for that. No, we don't do that. But, uh, but uh, actually, we, we have learned a lot. I have been working with Sokonia since like 2006 or something like that. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you, you have to know your, your materials. It's, right. So, yeah, so it's, study, so yeah. basically study your materials but, and have good communication and, uh, with your technique. Yeah. And go to the webinars with, uh, with me and Coray, and then everything will be right. Yeah, that's nice to hear. So you have you have some, with them, you have some questions in, yes. the, in the chat room. Uh, uh, I think it's my dedicated fans here who ask the questions. Yes. Uh, what would you think say the most challenging in the work with ceramics? The most challenging thing is that you can't work as you did before. You can't just preparate and take an impression and rely on the technician and say, "Get me a construction and I put it," and then the patient is happy. Uh, we have really to think about uh, uh, the, the, the rules for, uh, for, um, for ceramics, how to make them by the book. We have to make it by the book. We can't make mistakes. Uh, we have to talk. We have to look at aesthetics and strength. And it's more complicated than it has ever been before. But at the same time, much easier than it has been before. I think if we can skip the met metals, uh, uh, as far as we can, we will uh, have a, a happier patient, probably. I, th I think so. I think the future belongs to zirconia. But we cannot do anything wrong. We cannot go from, from the book to one, two, three, as we did before. We could be, be, do before with the metal ceramics. Uh, so we have Los Ambek here. Thank you very much for well done. Manufacturers of zirconia have different names and values for translucency. How do we handle that? I think you, you as, as you work with the implants, you work with one kind of implant, or you work with Nobel or Scarman, and you keep to that, learn the system and uh, talk with your technician because you have to really, really, really work very, very tight together. And you will make a lot of mistakes at the beginning, but um, eventually, uh, eventually it will work. But uh, you have to work with one system. I work with a lot of systems, Katana maybe 70%, but I work in a, in a specialist clinic and that's different. But uh, I really, really, really have to know your material. So stick to one material and uh, do it. If you do Katana or Boxir or whatever you want, you can choose it yourself, but stick to one, one, uh, one uh, manufacturer. Uh, Gustav Blumgen, what are your thoughts of no prep veneers crowns? Well, I think uh, I haven't done many of these uh, because most of our patients, they come with already prepped uh, teeth <laughs> or, or uh, uh, fractured teeth. But um, I would say that non-preparation uh, uh, 
prep veneers. Uh, we should be very careful with that. I've seen a lot of fractures with that, especially when uh, we have uh, had some foreigners coming here and uh, we don't do that that much in Sweden actually, but it's getting uh, more common. But uh, they, they fracture, they, uh, you have to select your cases. I think they are good if you select your cases. It's, for example, in, uh, uh, with that uh, guy with a uh, erosion problem, we could have used non-prep veneers if we had a space. So in that case, maybe that's good. Uh, Patrick Sakovic, uh, thank you for a great presentation. Dr. Dirawi, do you recommend to use resin cement even if the operation is subgingival? giving it's manageable to keep the field dry or is it better to use another cement? I always use uh, uh, resin cements and the, the new ones are actually not as uh, uh, sensitive as the old ones. But if you know your technique, uh, you put some silicone uh, anesthetics and you get it dry, you can actually use it for over 90% of the cases. I, I haven't had the problem with that, uh, with uh, that cementation with Panavia and not with uh, Relax uh, Ultimate that we used before also, so it's a good cement that too, but it has to be uh, uh, genuine uh, resin cement. Uh, Anneli Hult Lagerman, what will you use if you need a separate cronia bridge <laughs> to trepanate through a cronia crown? Uh, actually, I use uh, the, the ordinary uh, diamonds, but I take a new one. We have uh, the we only use them once and then we throw them away. So single use, uh, diamonds for single use. And I take a new one uh, and I just uh, drill. And um, I don't have a problem with that if I take a new, a new, uh, a new diamond actually. I don't use uh, any special uh, drills for taking out zirconia or anything like that. So it works for me. So a new, a new long, um, a single use uh, diamond should be good. So that's what I use. Uh, Jenny Sundberg, do you ever do broxia crowns or do you only do katana? Uh, in the 2010, maybe 12, something like that, we only did the broxia. Um, I, I have had a lot of success with the broxia. Um, so I have no problem with that, but uh, since I was introduced to Katana and the high translucent, I know that Bruxier has a high translucent uh, multi-layer uh, crown also, but I think uh, Katana or Ivo Claw is, uh, you have a lot more to choose from for the, the patients. You can treat more patients with these uh, big uh, manufacturers. Uh, so I don't use Bruxia anymore, but I don't think that's a bad thing to use. But uh, I would prefer Katana or uh, Evoclaws uh, Zircat. Uh, Preto from Zirconsan is also what I what I work for, with now. Uh, the last questions here uh, from How I P Thirty Pro. Hi, with Sam, you said we should use Panovia because it's well tested. But how about Evoclaw Multilink? Yes, that's what I uh, was uh, trying to show with, uh, with a slide with the MDP, because the MDP that you have with uh, in Panavia is the original one and the one that lasts over the years with uh, multi-cycling when you chew, when you get saliva and so on. You have the original MDP that will last much better than the other uh, MDPs in the other cements. So I have uh, used uh, Multilink for a very long time, uh, but actually, uh, when I compare it to Panavia or Rela X Ultimate, uh, I would say uh, it's not my first choice of cement right now because the MDP in it um, isn't really the original one. And if you use Panavia, you will have a much better result with it because of the original MDP that uh, they have in their Panavia. So uh, that's, I hope that was the answer to that question. Wissam, you have one more question. Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. do you polish the process of the HTML before or after glazing? I use Ceric and I use a lot of... Uh, uh, well, um, I always get the crowns glazed because I don't have, uh, I don't uh, mill it in in-house. We have a technician who does it. 
Uh, so uh, I don't do the glazing. So if I have to grind the, the, the katana, I, I polish it uh, without, uh, uh, without glazing further. But uh, if you use the, the uh, katana, uh, what do they call them? Uh, they are the katana. Yeah, yeah. So if you use them, you will get a very, very small, a very, very nice and smooth surface. And I actually use this one on uh, Emax CAD, the lithium desilicate. And you know, some patient they say, ah, oh, it's not, it's not uh, smooth. It's rough, and I cannot use it, and so on. And since I started to use those ones, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. It's, it's, it's um, amazing, actually. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that was the answer of the question. What do you think they are? Is it uh, what about the glazing and polishing? You are a dental technician. Uh, yes, uh, regarding polishing and uh, glazing, uh, there is several recommendations on the market, of course, and from researchers. But uh, if the patient really is a broxer or um, patient that bites really hard then the recommendation is to uh, polish the occlusal surface and the lingual surface and uh, the buccal surface you can have the glaze on especially if you do it in-house in ceric otherwise you can polish it up and you have the pearl effect and with the multi-layer system you will really have the full aesthetic anyway yeah. without staining so you 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 missing the staining of course but if it's a, a of the as a, if it's a crown made in the posterior area it, it it won't make any difference so you you will rather be more polished and it's more smoother with the antagonist if you're uh if you're um, a broxer or a height biter a strong biter yeah, I totally agree with that. So uh, we don't do uh, add uh, anything uh, glazing after we cement uh, or, or after polishing. But if you have a ceric in house, and of course you do it yourself, then then you can glaze it if you want. But uh, I agree with that. They are there's no need to do that. So there is another question. Yes. Um, uh, yes. Uh, do you always have use sandblasting before you cement constructions? Yes, I do that. I cement blast all the zirconia uh, constructions, not the uh, uh, lithium desilicate, because maybe that's not a very good idea. And then you have the hydrofluoric acid that works on the lithium desilicate. But all my zirconia uh, bridges, crowns, I uh, sandblast before I cement. Yes. And, th and that's, that, that are the recommendations like, uh, according to the science we have right now, actually. So I do that all the time. If I don't do that, I have forgotten it. Great, great. And then the labs is, labs is always doing it before they also deliver it. The most I don't know if you do, do they do that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you have to talk with your lab there, but I, I'm not sure if they are, all the labs do it. But uh, of course, as you say, they are, you can talk with your lab so they can do it uh, before. But yeah. I'm not sure everyone does it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, everybody, I think uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much for participating. And yep. it was a very, very interesting uh, webinar you had with some. And thank you very much. And for those who have uh, questions, uh, please, you can send them an email or through us from Curare. And hope to see you again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.